Hey, this is DM Allen. Thanks for joining us once again for another week of awesomeness. Uh, let's just get it started. Last time on Roll with Advantage. So you guys uh, run aground again, and uh, uh, this time uh, the submerged stalagmite cuts so far deep into the ship that the ship actually stops moving forward. You gotta cross the ring of sharks. Everybody, uh, after after you guys have grabbed what you can, there is more here, but there's uh, all of the figures start standing up and they start moving towards you. Uh, you see her eyes are glowing slightly, uh, almost with the radiant light like Bon, um, but it's darker. Uh, kind of, it's got like that glow, but it is not radiant light. For you guys, what is about to happen happens in the past. So, Bon, you're you're running through a field, and the field has uh, wild flowers popping up in it, and you've got like you've got this really nice ornate sword um, hanging off of your hip, and you pull the sword out and you start play fighting like you've done so many times in the past. You are. Uh, protecting your town from from the demons that uh, the elders talk about, and you are the savior of this town. You see your your enemy, a very old lady, starts running as if she was a child through the field towards you with a wooden sword raised above her head, uh, shouting, coming at you with a, a downward swipe. And something happens, something that never happened before that, was your hand is pulled, almost as if the sword tugs at you. The sword uh, defends against the, the wooden blade, and your metal blade uh, comes down and stabs deeply into the old woman's torso. She starts bleeding profusely. There's fear in her eyes. And you're filled with the sense of, of fear as well. It goes black and uh, color starts fading back to your vision and you're running. You're running uh, you're running away. You've got a, a pack full of, of what little things that you could uh, scrounge up for your for your travels. Uh, there's sweat on your brow and uh, you're having a really hard time catching your breath. It's it's hot in your chest as as you've been running as hard as you can. You come to the perimeter of your town, Kaigal, and on the ground you can see uh, celestial runes uh, drawn into the, uh, into the ground as if a stripe bordered this town line. And you start to chant. You start chanting a, uh, a children's rhyme that had been given to you and all the other children of Kaigal. Leave the town and watch the ground. The marks you'll see them lay. Leave the wards. You'll be lost for sure. And the demons will surely play. And you take one big step. At that time, you wake up. You had doze off uh, while peeling, peeling potatoes and uh, making the soup for the, for the crew. Um, the water is overboiling. Um, you wake up to the hissing of the of the pot as it's spilling over over your um, your fire elementals home for the ship. Um, and something something tugs at your vision, almost like your eyes want to look uh, to the coastline. And uh, and it's there that you see the old woman. Who, uh, who you just stabbed in your dream. Something, something tells you to follow her. How did everybody else go about getting to Skullport? So you, you know, uh, <laughs> it well, took us forever. Yeah. So let me <laughs> let me explain real quick. Uh, what you see between you and this old woman is a ring of sharks, a perfect ring, that is uh, circling around your ship. Um, you see these fins, and they are very tall. If you were to uh, go up into the crow's nest, you might might think that you might be able to see uh, some sort of silhouette. Um, 
Uh, coming from the crow's nest, though, is the zip line that you guys used originally um, that is hooked into the to the wall of the uh, of the cavern, the cliff face, uh, if you will. And uh, uh, that's how you guys originally used or that's how you guys originally got over to the cavern that led to skull port. But when everybody else went across, they didn't use the zip line. Yeah, you notice. You notice that um, uh, the rowboat is gone. You you know that they were talking about taking it. You weren't above. Uh, you weren't on deck uh, when they left, though. You were gathering all your supplies to start this uh, the soup for the crew when they were to return. I run across the zip line. <laughs> all right. What's your acrobatics? 19. 19. So in traditional monk-like fashion, you uh, get up to the crow's nest and run uh, across this uh, taut rope to the, to the cavern wall. The old lady has since disappeared into the cavern. Uh, she's on the right side of this cavern wall, and uh, you are on the left. She followed inward towards the locks, and um, you do as well. Uh, you see down below you about 15 to uh, 20 feet. Um, you see these pseudopods come up out of the water, and they're just kind of waving around, almost like trying to find something in the uh, up above, um, but they're unable to reach you. You make your way past the locks, and you uh, eventually work your way into uh, the town of Skullport. Now, what you see is is this town on stilts, and, uh, built from reclaimed wood. Uh, some of these buildings actually look like a portion of a ship, like the center bit of the ship with portholes on the side and stuff like that, and has been like closed off on edges um, to become a building up on stilts. You see the roof part of this cavern inside. You see a green glow like move across the top of this uh, uh, roof. And you feel the stinking breeze. It smells like rot and fish. You see a, uh, a small uh, dock sticks out from the, from the wall. And there's a very small ship, uh, uh, rowboat. Uh, slightly, actually, slightly smaller than a than a common rowboat. It's made uh, primarily for one person, and you see a uh, you see a figure standing on uh, docks across from you, next to the city, and then you also see a boat next to that uh, figure, and someone else is standing in that boat. You do not see the old lady right now. What do you want to do? Uh, a big glob of brackish black liquid uh, drops down from the ceiling and strikes you uh, dead in the uh, top of the forehead. Um, uh, and it, like, oozes down your face. Um, and when you go to, like, rub it away, it's kind of itchy and um, uh, and quite slimy. It stinks a lot. Like mold and rot. Gross. Yeah. Um, do I have any idea where the old lady would have gone? Like, what direction she was heading kind of a thing? No, but um, uh, everything seems to dead end here. Um, you can follow the river slightly up into, uh, up to one of these walls where um, <clears throat> this underground river, like, comes out from uh, from underneath uh, like a small section of wall, um, but other than that, it uh, it all seems to lead here. All right, I'm gonna turn my appearance to that of one of the squid people, and then I'm going to stealthily head towards the uh, guarded figure. Okay, on the on the boat. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, you get on this rowboat and you take it over to the docks 
as you're getting there, you see this figure standing on the docks uh, becomes clear and clear. Uh, they are standing at attention uh, with their eyes clouded over uh, in gray. Their hair is slicked back uh, seaweed, and they've got these polyps of, uh, what do you call it, barnacles and things like that. Um, zebra mussels grow on on its back. It seems to have been a humanoid, um, a male, and uh, un, uh, without looking at you, it says, um, Outsider, you have four bells. Four bells? Four bells. Hooray? Um, and it doesn't seem to, to react. You also see this um, assassin-like uh, uh, person uh, standing guard in, in this rowboat, which you recognize to be the rowboat from the ship, as it's got an obsidian flame, a black uh, flame painted across the side of it. At a quick glance, um, you don't recognize this person. Can I do more than a quick glance? Yeah, go for it. Uh, you can do a perception unless you want to get in the ship and investigate. I'll just do perception. Ten. Ten. Okay. So uh, even with a ten, uh, you see a small corner of a card um, that is sticking out from one of the benches. You conclude that it's probably one of Keo's antics and that it might be a safeguard for protecting the boat. Okay. At that moment, you see goblins uh, moving down this dock. These docks actually move into the city, and the city streets are built of wooden docks all around. Um, you also see uh, globes of, of this green-yellow light, and uh, you can see this like kind of silhouette inside of it uh, undulating and moving around. And some of these lanterns actually, like, list and, and kick around as if it was uh, agitated. Uh, you see these goblins, they're coming uh, coming down the boardwalk, but they're behind some crates, and as part from the crates, you see the bottom half of them are crab-like. They've got all these barnacles growing on them, and then you, you hear the call of a person hawking uh, different things on the road. Fine flasks! Fine flasks indeed. I sell finest flasks. I head towards the hawker. You come across this uh, this old lady who, as she's talking, her jaw opens uh, uh, really wide, almost like an eel. Um, it, it almost unhinges as she talks, and her skin is rubbery and stretches. And she looks at, like, your disguise, and she, like, lowers her eyes, brings her shoulders up, uh, tight to her ears and uh, and almost like bows her head as if uh, as if you have some reverence or uh, uh, power over her. Um, I walk up to her. Okay. Say, who are you? <laughs> I, I am but a a humble servant, my lord. And who am I? You. You are are one of. Our God's guards, my lord. And who is your God? She looks at you strangely. But attest, my lord, I, Slar Krethel is, is our God, my lord. Slar Krethel? Sl of course, that's, my that's lord. That's a DM question. Yes, Slar Krethel. We heard that name before. I think when the tentacle monster was blowing up the casino. Yeah, it sounded familiar. Said he, like, worshipped Slar Krethel. Have you seen, uh... Any more of me? Uh, as as you're saying that, um, a troop <clears throat> uh, starts marching down the streets. Uh, there are three fish-like humanoids. Um, unlike what you've seen, these uh, would be recognized to a world traveler as a uh, triton. And uh, uh, they're accompanied by these armored uh abominations like what you're disguised as. I say, oh, never mind. Found him. <laughs> Not too far off into the distance, you hear uh, some some people arguing. And uh, uh, when you 
when you look down these these dock like roads you see um you see the old woman again um and she she has uh taken a very large bottle of booze and is walking through the streets as a uh, hawker is um yelling for her to come back and pay um give me another perception check please a 19 nice <laughs> uh you notice that in a lot of these windows as you're walking by there are actually people uh standing in the windows and they are watching specifically you as you're passing by uh they they are like standing in the windows almost like sentries and and their heads turn and watch you as you walk down these these streets um i was walking kind of like not to draw attention to myself you know yep keeping to the side walking nonchalantly um after noticing that i'm going to change to more of a like deliberate but like overpoweringly assertive assertive I'm gonna I'm gonna walk assertively down the road. Okay, like you own the place. Like I own the place. Okay, okay. You look more like these guards now, uh, as if you're enforcing instead of being a tourist. You follow this old lady as she's drinking from her bottle. Uh, you see her image start to uh, waver, and it it shifts and then dissipates. And what you see. Uh, underneath this guise is a slender female who resembles uh, what you think your sister would have looked like. The biggest difference, though, is she's got uh, she's got purple hair uh, cut in a mohawk, and on her bulb part of her head, she's got this ring of tattoos um, all the way around from from one temple to the to the other around the back of the head. What languages do you know? A lot, actually. Good. Common, Celestial, Giant, Infernal, Elvish. You recognize this as Infernal. And on it, it says Pride, Vengeance, Vanity. All the way across. You feel a tug on your robes. Psst, psst. Hey, Bon. And you look back, and it's Keo. And he's, like, hiding behind one of these barrels. Come with me. Come on. Come on. The lady throws the bottle at the empty bottle at one of the houses, and it just breaks apart, shattering across the uh, across the wood street. And she starts making her way towards this tavern called the Pick and Lantern. How, how lit is this area? It's pretty fucking lit. Like, like it's off the hook. What do you mean? How much light is there? <laughs> uh, it's dimly lit. Um, well, it, I mean, it's well lit, but the the light isn't clear. Does that yep. make sense? That's okay. good. Um, a black bear appears. Okay. I reach into my bag of tricks. Okay. Pull out a fuzzy and throw it, and a black bear appears. <laughs> it's a small black bear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's a very small black bear. <laughs> Say, uh, watch for that lady to come out. And it, and it's like, it, it gives a, a nod and then it like sits back and then crosses its paws and lays down on the ground, uh, hiding, hiding behind one of the barrels. I say, if she comes out, I want you to growl at the top of your lungs and then come find me. And then I go with Keo. Okay. Keo tells you, he's like, yeah, we, we found uh, slaves, and uh, um, we got one, actually, and it grew a peg leg. It was uh, pretty crazy. And then Ting got drunk, and we stole a bunch of stuff from a casino, and uh, um, and Kenyon's uh, uh, been drinking a lot of them potions. Um, and and then uh, you all meet up, uh, and Keo's like, You'll never guess who who I saw. It looked kind of like Bon here. Not Bon, though. Did we all meet up with Bon and Keo? They met up with you. Uh, okay. Uh, last you guys were left was around the uh, the cobalt uh, with the pig leg. Uh, yeah. 
I should tell you guys something. Oh. Um. So I might be inherently evil. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> All along. You're funny, Bon. You're funny. Uh, I know. I know you guys know that. Um, what I told you about my past wasn't exactly true. We never really discussed uh, how we, exactly I came about to be with Eifer in the streets all those years ago. Um, I don't know how to say this. Until today, I thought I had killed my sister. Uh, and I've given it a lot of thought. And how how people of my village get their names is we see a fortune teller and the fortune teller tells us one word to describe what our future holds and that sort of becomes our name that word isn't ever really told us it's for us to discover in our lifetime and um, I'm pretty sure my name is supposed to be Bane and I don't think that's a good thing. So you've just been saying your name wrong all these years? <laughs> We're in order to hide what our true destiny is based on what the fortune teller sees, the word that she sees is altered slightly. So she said my name is Bon, dropping off the E at the end. There's still room for interpretation of that. You could be the bane of evil things. That's that's kind of what I hoped. Um, there could also just be buns in your destiny. Like, maybe you eventually open up a bakery. I don't know. It <laughs> could be. Uh, but just, just ba saying. bakers and banes of evil don't see their sister coming at them in a play fight in their village they don't stab them through the chest that's pretty messed up but uh fortune tellers curses it's all ridiculous I make my own destiny maybe instead of dropping an E they dropped a D and you're supposed to start <laughs> a band <laughs> Guys, we should totally start a band. Dude, that would be awesome. Is that why you're listen, friends with listen. The, the the musician? The Eifer? Yeah. Well, <laughs> see, he tried. Yeah, he yeah. was like, Bon, you'd be great on the drums. And I tried really hard, but I can't keep a tempo to save my life. So, so I'm, I'm sorry, Bon. I'm sorry, but I'm supposed to believe that you wanted to kill your sister? Before she came at me, no. But in the moment... It felt like I had to. So you didn't want to kill her? You didn't just like wake up one day and say, I'm gonna go stab my sister? No. I Maybe don't see your sister. You're evil then. What, wait, you were the bait. Did wait, you ever think minute. you might be under a spell or something if it was like a sudden split second decision to just be like, I'm gonna be a totally different person? Up, up until recently, have you been drinking too? And I like, Am I peer over toward ten? I'm like drinking fun. because that's that's sort of my thing. I'm, I mean, <laughs> no, I have not been drinking. Uh, Bond's talking about like, or are starting to talk about his sister, and Keo's like, uh, guys, uh, uh, we've got we've got different problems here, and he points towards the cobalt with the peg leg, who's kind of just walking away, just <laughs> clunk, clunk, <laughs> clunk clunk and is walking towards uh, the water. Q, you, you got a, a defective slave there. He's not my slave. Sure. Um, so Keo, uh, he runs over and is like, hey, hey, uh, what, you, what are you doing? And he's waving his hands in front of uh, this guy's face and he's like trying to push him back and stuff like that. And eventually he's like, oh, I didn't want to do this. And he just like picks the cobalt up and puts him on his shoulders because he's got the gauntlets and and just keeps uh walks back towards the group and the cobalt starts like clawing at him and and biting 
I hit him with the butt of my axe. All right. Uh, strength. Uh, uh, check, please. And it's like, sorry, Q. It's a reckless swing, of course. What you gotta know? Uh, just the attack. Or it's not an attack. It's a check of strength. Is is basically it. So just add strength plus proficiency. Twenty four plus proficiency is twenty nine. Holy shit! Uh, so you just whack. The cobalt goes limp across Keo's shoulders, and Keo's kind of looking around and is like, "What do we do with him?" <laughs> you can throw him in the water now. <laughs> I I have a feeling that's not a good idea. I just healed him. Why would we throw him in the water? Uh, and I actually walk over toward the water's edge and peer down. Where was he going? Go ahead and give me a perception check. 21. 21. Uh, so you walk over to the water's edge where the dock road uh, ends, and you look down into the black murky water, and you see in the water, you see a silhouette move, almost like a snake, really quickly away from you. I want you to imagine as you're actually looking out onto the bay of the city after peering down into the water. And when you look outward towards where this uh, this figure like swam towards, it looks like it goes out somewhere where uh, that giant elevator came down from the ceiling. Okay. Do you remember that elevator? I remember you mentioning it. Yeah. Yep. I walk back to the group and said, uh, hey guys, there was something in the water. I saw it dart off toward the, the center of the, the bay. Ooh, should we play chase? Yes. Who is that? Keo. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't sound anything like Keo. I know. Bond's voice is really deep, guys. <laughs> Damn it. Ben's voice I mean, is I mean, really deep, And guys. I'm the one pretending I mean, Bond's, to be drunk here. Bond's <laughs> voice is pretty deep, too, but... I can make people breathe water. Yeah, let's go. I mean, it's not just Kenny and that gets to suggest fun stuff. Keo, make me breathe water. All right. Make, make and, all of us breathe water. Uh, so he does. He he casts uh, his spells and does his magic thing. Cool. Uh, he, he, <laughs> so we don't have to use his seaweed. Use a magic man? Yeah. He, uh, he does it with a flourish. Like, he rolls his, his tattered... Uh, green robes up and like almost flexes and uh, and really makes a show of it. I look at Q <laughs> and I'm like, "What are you gonna do with your slave?" That's what I was asking you guys. Um, you you bought him. That's true. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> you bought a slave? Uh, I mean, technically it was saving the slave, but yeah, he owns a slave now, so he's my friend. And Kinian whispers to Tin to like egg her on. I'm just like gotta buy his friends now i laugh at that maybe a little too loud so people look at me kind of weird yeah hey everyone i'm dm allen thank you so much for joining us once again uh this is season two episode 33 please make sure to tell your friends about us uh we don't put in a dime into advertising so word of mouth is the best way for us to grow Tell your friends, tell your family, uh, hit us up on Twitter. We're doing some cool stuff out there uh, at DM's Table. We're even starting to mess around with making dice. Go check that out. That's pretty cool looking. Uh, you can also check us out on Facebook at the DM's Table. And if you tweet at us, use the hashtag RollWithAdvantage so everybody can see it. All right, here's AJ, voice of Manette, with this week's sponsor. This week's sponsor is Audible. Audible is an amazing audiobook platform that has over 180,000 to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Our listeners can get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com rwa. This week, I want to recommend The Rook by Daniel O'Malley. The Rook begins with the main character waking up with complete amnesia surrounded by dead bodies. She finds a letter in her jacket addressed to you. It's written by the former occupant of her body and explains that she knew her memory would be lost and a co-worker is trying to kill her. Turns out she's one of the Rooks of the secret paranormal version of MI5 and has to continue her job pretending nothing is wrong. 
That's an absolutely fantastic book. It's also one of my favorites. Uh, make sure to go check it out on Audible. All right, we can't ever forget Incompetech.com. Incompetech.com has been with us since the beginning. They're absolutely fantastic. Uh, they've got great scores. They're great for getting your players in the mood. They're really, really good for selling the situation. If you don't believe me, here's a sample. That's incompetech.com. Go check them out. And we're going to get right back to the show. See you out on the internet. Bye, guys. So Keo's like, I remember there being tunnels off the east side of town. Can we drop them there? Drop your slave? He's not my slave. He's my friend. Hey, Keo's slip, slip friend. He's knocked out, Bon. Why don't you imagine what he wanted to do? Uh, so Keo like starts walking over to the water and he like looks down into the water and he's like, I don't think he can swim right now. And he like moves the peg, he moves the peg leg as well, like at the same time. I grab his slave. I'm just like, this slave can walk, watch the ship. And I take off running toward our, uh, our rowboat. Okay. The assassin to drop him on the ship. All right. On the rowboat. Yeah. And I turn toward the, the harbor master, and I'm like, two bells, right? One of the bells goes off. Still two bells, right? You have one bell. Oh, shit. And I take off running. Dude, I got four bells. You might have looked like you belonged. I did look like I belonged, Whereas I yeah. just looked a, a foot taller and yeah, and more scarred up. Yep. Minette looks awesome. Minette's got, like, Minette's got, like this, this uh, mask on and stuff like that, like full steampunk Minette. That's cool. Yeah. Manette. It smells like shit in this place. Oh, by cool. the way, I look like a badass parrot queen. Yeah. Like full leather coat and everything. Badass parrot queen. You look awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I look intimidating, excuse you. I'm sorry. Yeah. Badass like, parrot queen. Very I, spooky. I'll have you know something. I, get it right. <laughs> I look intimidating, okay? I, I passed another bottle of alcohol to Tim. <laughs> Slurp. I grab it. Oh, I already drank some of it. And I'm like, oh, wait, wait. This is... Can't the, I you have don't, the rest of it, though? This, you don't I, like can this you, stuff. Can you give it Fine, to this me? This is for pirates only. He was he was JK. <laughs> 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 oh. Didn't we have things... Th Tin's can one you, of us now. Can you have really Ifer? good liquor? Where's Ifer? What? That... Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> A worthless bard. So here, let me take that, put it, put it down. Okay, yeah. let's go find Eifer. By the way, how long am I poisoned for? Um, you're poisoned. That wasn't established. Yeah, oh. uh, uh, <laughs> probably another hour or so. Okay. So just keep it going until the. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, just keep it going. Eventually, the. It'll eventually wear off. It You'll sober out. up eventually. <laughs> <laughs> I'll reach a yeah. happy medium eventually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so, Keo's like, so are we not swimming now? Well, you did I... just do all that magic, didn't you? Yeah. To be honest, I forgot why we were swimming. I'm pretty place. tuckered out now. We're giving chase to some snake beast. Yeah. Okay. Like... There was something in the water. We gotta go find out what it is. And Kinian says, The bard's worthless anyhow, and I jump into the water. <laughs> Kinian? Kinian? And start swimming. Uh, are you swimming underwater or. On the surface? On the surface. I'm on the surface. Okay. All right. Um, so you see Kinian, and he's swimming out. Are you s swimming to get, like, anywhere or are you just swimming <laughs> i'm swimming out toward the the elevator okay like where i saw the the fish dig off okay i give i give chase to him too okay you hop in the water yep well i have a question yep because i want to jump in would my armor like make me not able to swim it will make it very difficult we probably should just dig in the boat just say yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah kenyan's not that smart no <laughs> I cast water walk on myself because, of course, why would I think to suggest that earlier when Kenyon or <laughs> when, Kia, when Kia was doing all his fancy stuff? But I'm just like, 
Yeah, I don't want to get out of my armor. That's too much work right now. So, water walk, and then I like skip off towards following Kenyon and Bon. And like, there's like a, a panty type shout from the water from Kenyon that like hears Tin like saying this as we're, like we're swimming off. And yeah. I say, in my experience, ladies take off the armor when they've been drinking. <laughs> That's tequila. <laughs> yeah. I thought you knew how alcohol worked. <laughs> um, Can uh, we get a piggy gnome ride on uh, Tenuvial? A <laughs> piggy gnome ride? <laughs> piggy. Are you going to jump on me quickly enough? I try. Okay. Uh, uh, acrobatic, please. 20. Yeah. Modify. Yes. Okay. Yep. Uh, so you feel like, you feel this backpack gnome, like, jump at you and, like, holds on towards your neck and you walk out into the water. I'm skipping. Um, uh, just kind of swinging. Very intimidating form of travel. Yeah, just kind of swinging light well, bringer. it's like a stomp. A dancing stomp, so all below me can tremble in fear. Are, are you like, are you doing like the dancing in the rain, like like skip, like you kick some of the water up and you sure. just, yeah. Why not? Yeah. And you're like batting at it with light bringer and, uh, yeah. Why not? Uh, so, Kenny and Bon, as you're swimming through the water, my strategy is to confuse any enemies. Yes, yes. Uh, as you're, <laughs> as you're swimming through the water, you're starting to bump into things. Okay. Uh, Kenny, and as you like reach out and paddle further, you get a good handful of hair, and and you like start to pull forward, and uh, you like feel a scalp below your hand and when you look down um it's a uh it's a seemingly very dead uh uh female woman mm -hmm. or god that's <laughs> redundant <laughs> you you see this female human and uh she's got like bright red hair um uh and very dead cold eyes and she seems to have like some uh sea some seaweed strapped around her leg to keep her from floating on the top of the water. I'm probably leading the charge, and uh, I kind of like lean my head to the side and shout back to Bon. I'm like, don't get the water in your mouth. It's pretty gross. <laughs> <laughs> and I just keep going forward. You keep paddling? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, you guys continue to swim forward, and... Um, uh, you get to underneath the elevator, and uh, where you're at, there's uh, Kenny and like when you uh, when you and Bon like quick look under the water, you see there's a big circle of um, of where these bodies are. So uh, almost like there's a perimeter of bodies, and then nothing, and it's directly below the the uh, elevator. A perimeter of bodies and then nothing. So the perimeter of bodies is circling the water and then the elevator is hovering above the perimeter of bodies? The elevator shaft. So it's an elevator shaft. So it's kind of like a laundry tunnel, laundry chute. Kind of. winch, Like a winch type thing and like the shining and all that. Yeah, kind of. So there's about a hundred foot radius of no bodies. And then just outside of that, think of like a body donut. Think of it like that. Wow, that's not a creepy way to put it. Yeah. Not like someone... a moat or a circle Ooh, or a, a ring. Ooh, that's a good one. Some, yeah, a someone ring. someone put that hungry body buoys <laughs> to mark where the the elevator comes down. Uh, you might. Yeah, you you can think of it like that. Yeah, they're marker buoys. Yeah. So so you and Bon are treading water, Kenyon, as as uh, uh, all four of you are kind of conversing, and Tin's just kind of kind of standing there. What do you guys want to do? I want to swim down. And I say, hey, Tin, drink one of these, and I throw her a potion. <laughs> oh, god! I smack that out of the air. <laughs> Damn it. I catch that second bottle. And I shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> I pull out one of the, the thunder pistols and try and shoot that, <laughs> that out of the air. Okay. Okay. <laughs> give, give me a, uh, a dex uh, check, please. But oh, I'm also like an attack. I had to yeah. like move up to catch it and stuff, so yeah. I'm like moving around. Yeah, so it's at disadvantage. 
<laughs> you... Okay, original roll stands. Uh, let's see. Uh, 14. Uh, that's going to miss. Okay. Yep. Uh, and I'm like, bottoms up. And don't I drink, drink one, that. too. <laughs> you boom, boom. You drink it? Yeah. All right. Uh, 2d8. I need them in succession, please. Go ahead. So I rolled an 8 and a 2. Nice. High five. I have an 8 and a 2 as well. Nuh-uh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay, so you both get the same potion. Like, like Kenny and you pull out two potions, and they're both like they're both red, blue, and gray. And uh, you throw one to to Tin, and you both pop the tops at the same time, and and it's almost like a race. So I want you uh, t- to both give me Constitution uh, checks. Oh, I thought you were gonna say like initiative to see who no. drink it first. Oh no! <laughs> Dan should have advantage because he's a good drinker. I rolled a two. <laughs> That's a 12. I have an eight. So, uh, so Tin, you're, you, you blow him away. Like you just straight, straight back, open the throat. It all just goes down. You actually do like a swirl motion because being a guard for so long, you understand the techniques of drinking. Oh, yeah. And you understand. I've been around for almost 400 years. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so you get a swirl motion going so that it just goes super fast out of the bottle because you know you can drink faster than what the bottle can provide. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bamf like that. And uh, so you both, uh, you both gain. Uh, the ability to shoot lasers out of our eyes. For uh, <laughs> uh, you, you gain a potion of athleticism. Uh, uh, Except, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so for the next ten minutes, all your strength and dex based skill checks and saves are done at advantage. Your base speed also increases by ten feet. Holy shit! Um, and with the secondary effect, you both start to hiccup uncontrollably. <laughs> she probably already was hiccuping. Yeah. <laughs> but now I'm really hiccuping. Yeah. Well, yeah. At least it's not like uncomfortable boils or anything like that. So. Yeah. Could be the lowers. Uh, <laughs> and bolstered by this, I dive underwater as a hiccup goes, bloop, and the water goes, bloop, 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 or air goes up to the surface. Okay. Um, That's not what you want for yeah. this swimming. <laughs> <laughs> so I understand Bon and Kinian want to go down. Does anybody else want to swim down? Why not are they going down again? I think Bon's curious is, is what it is. I'm just protecting Bon at this point. I'm just gonna like make sure that no one enters the water from above. Keo's still with I'm us. I'm protecting them. I think what Keo's doing is kind of keeping watch at this point. He's a little he's a little nervous at me being drunk. Yeah. As <laughs> as she starts to dance a jig, yeah, drunk, I wave Keo over and like get on the bird with him. <laughs> okay. Okay. I so, no longer feel entirely uh, safe. Yeah, you don't dry. Wanna, <laughs> yeah. You don't want to learn the drinking dance of the water deep watch? <laughs> and over the ring, Kinian's voice calls out, Bon, this is probably the death of us. Be prepared to swim to the surface if the need arises. So Bon, uh, you and Kinian have a terrible time trying to see down here. Do you have, you've got dark vision, right? Everybody's got dark vision? Yep. Yeah. So nope. you guys can see, but you still can't see that far because eyes are not meant to see underwater. Uh, our eyes aren't anyways. Um, they're meant to see through air. So, uh, so it's quite blurry, even though you can see the darkness. Are you swimming down in the center of it? Or are you trying oh, to follow no. the, are you trying to follow the donut of bodies? The donut of bodies. <laughs> okay. I'm not a complete idiot. Oh, okay. So, so <laughs> just a fairly large one. That's okay. <laughs> so, so Bon, you're using one of these these lines of seaweed as a like safety line, and you're you're swimming down with it, uh, with your hand holding on the seaweed at all times. And as you're working your way down into the water, um, you start to feel the water shift and turn around you, as if it's starting to come alive. And then you see, um, you see in uh, the seaweed ahead of you, you see uh, noses poking out. Noses, like shark noses. There's some sharks in here. Are they like normal size, or are they like megalodon shark size? 
30 foot long shark size. You fought them before. How many sharks? How many noses do you see? Perception check, please, uh, from both of you. I just rolled so, uh, a nat 20. 23. Uh-huh. Nice. So something that you notice with your perception, uh, Kinian, is that they're spaced evenly. There's uh, about 30 feet between each nose, and it continues as far as you can see around this ring of, of bodies. Um, uh, the the ring itself is a hundred foot in a uh, hundred foot radius, so um, you're you're gonna put it somewhere around like ten or fifteen sharks that you can see. They don't seem to be moving though. They're they're about uh, fifty feet deeper than than you currently. Are we inside of their circle or at their circle or outside of their circle? You're on the inner edge of the of the body donut okay so at what Mm -hmm. part of the donut are the sharks the inner ring okay i'm gonna move a little bit so back so you're going into the seaweed yes okay and then you're doing like a homer simpson into the bushes yes yeah it's like oh um i kind of see what's going on with the sharks and uh kenny and uh, like watches Bond kind of back into the seaweed and uh he believes he has a moment of uh pirate genius mm-hmm. and uh he rifles through his packs and pulls out a uh a torch and a bottle of alchemist's fire can I see him um yes uh, Kenny and Kenny, I can create a light for you. And before Bond can uh, get in range to illuminate anything, I stab the torch down into the alchemist fire and I drop it so it ignites in flame and I let go of it so it starts sinking into the depths. That's awesome. Okay, so like like a flare, right? Yeah. It just like it starts creating its own air around this flame. And, uh, and it's burning with such intensity that it's just like, and you drop it, uh, uh, Kenny and you like kind of toss it out towards the center as far as you can. And then it starts to drop and it illuminates with this, like this red alchemist fire illumination and it's playing across everything. And you can see now pretty clearly the sharks. I'm watching to see if they dart after the light. Okay. Uh, uh, you can see the sharks. They don't seem to dart after the light. You can see water that moves in and around the area, uh, but leaves, uh, leaves a pocket. You think that these might be elementals. You've seen them so many times Mm -hmm. that you think these might be elementals and they like kind of circle as it like goes downward. And after about a minute, it hits the bottom. You see, just before the light goes out, um, you see the the floor, and something's wrong with this floor. Uh, perception check? Can uh, take it too. Same with Bon, yeah. 23. Not 23. Uh, so, so Kenyon, you recognize it immediately. This looks like the skin of the Kraken. Over the, the ring... There is a a very quiet like mental message. <laughs> Kenyon's whispering I'm through whispering, the ring. I'm <laughs> whispering, whispering through the ring. Bon, hell no! And I start swimming toward the surface. Okay, okay. Bon doesn't know what you saw, by the way. Uh-uh. Kenyon's like dashing through the water at this point yep. with with all the extra athleticism and. All the other power he's gained from the potion, and yes, I'm rocketing toward the surface. Okay, um, Bon, what you see is this floor of like craggy mounds. Um, to you, it looks a lot like just uh, like rock. But Kinium, what you noticed was uh, it's more scaly than anything. Um, you see large cracks that look like uh, scales. It just seems like uh, cracks and crevices in the floor. Bon, you notice that there's no movement whatsoever on this floor. Kinian, what you noticed is like this circle of seaweed is 
all cracking. So it's like an Ouroboros in that it's like in a circle shape itself? It's that big that it's taking up that much volume that it's displacing everything around it. It's yes. a big circular mound that's That's what I'm saying. So it's, it's like in a circle shape. Yeah. yeah it's, it's not a ring. It's like it's it curled is, up. It's, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Freaking big. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're swimming towards the surface. Oh, yeah. What do you want to do, Bon? Oh, uh, with your uh, your perception specifically, you notice a amber-looking object uh, down by these scales. Amber-looking object? Yeah. Is it eye-shaped? No. Uh, it's it's about fist size, a little bit bigger than fist size, maybe like human skull size. There's no movement at the bottom? Uh, seems to be no. I swim down. Uh, you're really intrigued by this amber object, and you start swimming down. You get past the noses, and you notice that all these sharks' eyes are closed. Also, you feel the water, like, swirl around you, and it, like, kind of holds you. Um, uh, it's kind of weird. It's, it's almost like you're swimming through jelly is probably the best way to explain it. Um, the closer you get to this object, the more resistance uh, you receive. And as you get within mm, about 100 feet of it, uh, you can actually make out a giant rune on this object. Do I recognize the rune? Uh, it says mountain. Um, I still don't see any movement from the kraken. No. I continue down. Okay. You continue down uh, a little bit further. Do you want to make a any any sort of check or anything like that? Yeah, I want to do stealth, and I also want to, while I'm swimming down, take a look around to see if anything else is moving around. So I'll do stealth first. <laughs> well, it was a 15. Seven on the die. Yeah, baby. <laughs> now it's a uh, fif- no, it's a 15 stealth. Okay. And perception of... Well, that's a lot better. Uh, 26. I'm super fucking nervous because I feel Meta. like I'm going to die. Okay? I love... <laughs> and Kenya didn't tell you that it's a Kraken. Cause, nope. Because nope. he wouldn't. You just... Just like... You know this is eerie is yeah. is kind of what's happening here. Can I see Kenyan in the water coming up? I think at this point, Kenyan surfaced. And there's no bond? Uh, no bond. Kenyan, did you come to join the dance party? <laughs> She's tapping. I say over the ring. Bon, are you coming back up? Kenyan's really freaked out. And my eyeballs are wide open, and I'm, like, trying to keep my cool with my new drinking buddy, and I'm, like, super dilated. <laughs> like, like you see, you see his eyes, like, super dilated as if he's, like, pumping with adrenaline. So I, so I said that, are you, you here to join? And then notice. I don't notice. <laughs> and I'm well, like, no, I think I would. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah. I have a, what do you, I what have do you a say? passive perception of twenty. Yeah. So when yeah. drunk, I think I'd still somewhat notice yeah. these things. Hey, go for Your it. Your wisdom score gets takes a hit when you <laughs> you you do you know the scent of a warrior though. Like yeah. like you understand when when Kinian is like in beast mode and mm-hmm. there's a difference. Yeah. Wait, Kinian, what's up? Are you like? Afraid of the water all of a sudden? What's what's going on? Oh, oh let's dance. Let's let's dance uh <gasps> over by the shore. Let's let's go. And I'm like <laughs> like anime style. <laughs> like, <laughs> like a hovercraft across the surface of the water. I'm glad you joined us today, Bon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dance die. party on the shore. And I run after I run in after Kenny. Yeah, dude, it's just a this is a shiny thing. Oh, a shiny thing. It says mountain. Dude, that's a piece of six. Grab that shit. Hey, thank you so much for listening. Uh, what a fantastic episode. We cannot wait for next week's episode. Uh, we hope you stick around to find out what happens next. If you want to find out more about the show, about our characters, or things like that, go check us out on dmstable.com backslash rwa. DM's table has got information on how to contact us through Twitter or Facebook or things like that. Um, Go check it out and we'll see you out on the internet. See ya.